Hello, I'm here with Mickey Teaspoon, who's going to be talking about how he's adapted to the lockdown. Um, I'll let him introduce himself because he's a person, those of you who know me may know, and um, who, who drink in the, the pub that we run, um, but many don't. So I'll let him introduce himself and say what he's been doing, um, what he'd done before the lockdown and how he's adapted since. Hello, Mick. Morning, Andy. Oh, afternoon, Andy. Uh, right, yeah, my, my name's Mick. Um, what, what I did before the lockdown, I was... Uh, was um, I don't know uh, a trade paint driver, which uh, you, you may have seen some of them stood at the side of the road holding holding yellow plates out, begging for a lift. But that's not what I did. But essentially, what it is is um, just delivering cars and vans up and down the country, literally from to the land end to John Road. So, so you spend five days a week, seventy hours a week, driving up and down the country. Now, obviously, with all this lockdown, that's all had to stop. Um, so. Uh, so we said what I've done since then uh, is spent about a week catching up on sleep and then thought, well, I've got to do something. And just coincidentally, I was um, I was in my local, we're allowed to mention uh, which store it is, but my local supermarket, uh, one with big orange signs around it. Um, and I saw a sign that, that in there saying uh, staff wanted temporary contracts immediately uh, for order picking the um, uh, home delivery. Uh, deliveries, which is obviously taken off massively. So uh, I, I dropped them an email, and literally about two days later, the, this guy rang up and said, uh, "Right, we've got your email. Um, do you want to come in for for a meeting?" So I said, "Yeah, when?" He said, "About an hour." Yeah. So, so that's what I'm doing now. I'm working night shifts, working from it's only four hours from two in the morning till six in the morning. Uh, literally walking up and down the aisles, um, picking orders, and and it's great to be frank. Um, the, the, the wages are half decent. I, I expect that there'd be minimum wage, but they're not. Uh, they're, they're above that, and uh, and it's good. And, and the, the reason I did it is well, twofold. Uh, one, I'm, I'm no good at sitting around doing nothing really. Well, I am quite good, but I'm very good at it. But I don't want to. Do it. Um, and and two, frankly speaking, was financially uh, the, the trade pay thing. I'm self-employed, uh, so with all of this, that, that means no money coming in. Uh, so, so that's kind of what I'm doing. And um, yeah, it's, it's been a real education. I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, good, good. Um, everyone's going to um, talk about the things they're missing during the lockdown and stuff. Um, but have you found any sort of positives out of it? Um, anything that you managed to do, anything that you weren't having time to do before, that kind of thing? Not as much as I'd like, if I'm really honest. Um, I sort of thought at the start of this, right, I'm going to catch up on all the books I've bought and not read, and I've read one of them. Uh, which in, in five weeks is not a good, not a good hit rate. Uh, and so I, I had every intention of doing lots of stuff that, uh, that, that I, I never have time to do in, in real life uh, and not done enough of it. But I'm determined, yeah, I'll, I'm, I'm going to read more books. Of course, I'm on TV and stuff, and you know, like everybody else has, and, and listen to a lot of music. I've discovered, I don't know how I listened to it a bit before, but uh, Radio 6, which is brilliant. Uh, for, for hearing new stuff and good old stuff. So I listen to that most days. Um, but so, so yeah, I've, I've not done as, as much as I am conscious of. I've, I've not done as much as, as, as really we could. And it's, it's an easy, I, I think, it's an easy thing to slip into. But just to sort of sit around on the sofa looking at your phone, you know? And it's just crap. We, we, we all should really do more. But... I guess you should do, do whatever you, you've got to do. I, I don't suppose there's any rules really on what you should and shouldn't do. Um, but like myself, you'd, um, I know you're a big uh, music fan, going to a lot of gigs, and mm. um, also a keen sports fan, um, football and stuff. But yeah, obviously, you're missing that sort of thing. Have you been, um, sports more difficult, but have you been watching any of the online gigs and stuff? Yeah, yeah, I have. Um, I, I... I don't want to sound ungrateful to the people that are doing it, but I think it's, it's a bit of overkill going on with it now. You know, it just seems that, that everybody's doing it, and some of them are doing it once a week. And I get it, you know, that, that they, you know, that they like a lot of other people got no money coming in, uh, so so that's one reason for wanting to do it. But I, I think there has been a slight bit of overkill. I think uh, what Les Carter's done with with Abdul Jabbarov, he, he's he put two EPs out that he's just recorded at home. He's just put the second one out this week. Uh, uh, I think that makes a real change, you know. And Ghosts of Men as well have uh, just put a single out. So, 
So I'm not, you know, maybe more fans could, could perhaps do that. But yeah, the, I mean, the online gigs have been great. I've watched, I've watched lots of them. Um, and it, I say it sounds, it sounds a bit churlish and, and a bit ungrateful to them. But yeah, I, I think it's a little bit of overkill, really. Yeah. Well, I mean, last night, for example, I, I um, there was four different ones I watched bits of from people right. I know, and and it's it's a lot going on. I mean, it, but I suppose that what else can they do at the moment? You know. Yeah, um, yeah. But the recording side of it, if they're able to do that, I think it's the perfect opportunity, like you say, what Abdu Davaroff have done, because maybe they wouldn't have got a chance to record that if it wasn't for this going on. Yeah, or, or perhaps wouldn't have, I, 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 you know, I don't want to speak for less at all, but you know, maybe wouldn't have had the inspiration to do it. So yeah, you've always got to find positives. Yeah, and that's why I think, uh, the reason I've started doing this is I think a lot of people aren't, they're just moping about. Um, you see that you see a lot of the, the positive side of it online. But then when you talk to people one to one, a lot of people are just literally moping about. And yeah. I mean, I kind of was to start with, but I didn't think it would go on this long. In the back of my mind, I was like, well, I'll watch telly for a week and then it'll all be OK. Yeah. And um, yeah. it wasn't. And then it, you've got to start doing things, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's the same. It gets back to what we were saying earlier on. You know, I spent a week catching up on sleep and, 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 and watching TV thinking this, this is all right. It's a holiday sort of thing. But, you know, you're conscious that there's no money coming in. You've still got bills to pay. So that's that's really why I went and, and got this job at, uh, at the supermarket. Yeah, but that, you know, then I, I take it you, you, you're enjoying the job. It's something a bit different for you, anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's um, physically, I'm, it's, it's actually quite hard work. I mean, I'm, none of us are as young as we used to be, and so you know, doing four hours walking up and down supermarket aisles, it, yeah. But it's 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 a bit challenging, but yeah. It's, but but, but I, I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, it's it's, yeah. it's different and. And that's and you're getting your daily exercise by just going to work as well. So, oh, yeah, this thing where you're supposed to do ten thousand steps a day. I've done that by eight o'clock in the morning every day. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've done that since since the lockdown started. To be honest, um, but it's it's one of those things. But for me, it's adapted. I'm on my feet all day when I'm you know before this, and now it's just like find myself walking about while I'm on my phone. You know, just to to keep busy. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, um, is there anything else you, you want to add about the lockdown? Anything else you've, you've noticed? Well, yeah, another thing that we've we've done and, uh, is uh, my partner and I we've um, we've got an allotment uh, just around the corner from 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 here. Uh, but unfortunately, we can't actually go and get it. The guy that runs the allotment site uh, is on self isolation because he's over seventy, so he can't get out to give us the keys and take the money off us and all that kind of stuff. I don't know the first thing about growing stuff. I'm I'm crap at it, but. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting into that and, and getting up there and yeah, digging some holes and, and, and plants and stuff and watching it die, you know. <laughs> yeah. but that's good. That's, that's, so now it's, it's something you're looking forward to once, once it's over, yeah. So yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, I guess as soon as this, this guy, I've spoken to him by, by email on two or three occasions, and, and he's as frustrated as it's just we are. I think you know, he's wanted to get in there and, and go and start digging, but. Yeah, you know, it is what it is. He's, he's say, over 70 on, on self isolation and, and can't get out. But it's interesting that, you know, I, I thought allotments, the bit of waiting list, I thought, you know, lots of people would be seemingly not. You can go and get one. There's loads of empty blocks everywhere. And yeah, it's, uh, I don't know, <laughs> it's sort of harking back to the, uh, to the, to the war days, not, not that I was in that sense, obviously. Um, but you know, where people grow your own food and all that kind of stuff, and, and I don't, you know, we don't want to do it as a with a financial motive because it's frankly it's probably cheaper to go and buy your spots from from Spainbridge or somewhere else. But just as, as, as an activity, you know, to get out, get some fresh air, you know, once a day or, or a couple of times a week or whatever, and, and just go and grow some stuff to eat. I think it'd be really cool. Yeah. Excellent. And of course, um, you're looking forward to um, football again. The big Clapham uh, FC, Captain FC fan. Yeah, yeah. But, well, unfortunately, for the obvious reasons, the season's been sort of written off now, so until we start again, hopefully, start the next season. Which, but who knows? You know, I mean, that's all September time, isn't it? I can't. I don't know whether it will start or, or not again. But yeah, yeah, I can't wait. I don't see a game. Can do too much and sing, sing loads and jump and down. It's great. Cool. It was, uh, I, I don't know if you saw it on um, changing the subject slightly, but kind of not. Um, uh, Ginger's, Ginger Wildhart's comments on Twitter, I think it was yesterday, where he said he's in a real quandary about 
what to do as and when this starts to all to leave. So that is, you know, I'm, I'm really keen to, to try and support the small venues and then get them back up and running again. But equally, I, I don't want to be responsible for two or three hundred people being crammed into a, a small venue with sweaty and jumping around and, and passing the, 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 you know, the virus around again. It's, it's a really difficult wandering. You know, I, 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 I want to go to a football game again and do all the things I've just said about, but, you know, equally, you know, do, do we have to be absolutely, well, we do have to be absolutely sure that, that this is all over and, and we're not going to, it's not going to be irresponsible to go and do something like that. Yeah, yeah. And so the, the, the world there, the, um, yeah, it's being responsible and I've seen a lot of, a lot of people haven't been. Um, and mm. it is a matter of, we want these things back, but personally, I think, you know, better safe than sorry. And it yeah, isn't kind of back at any cost. You know, I, I, I feel especially sorry for, for you guys in, in your your line of business because unfortunately I think you know the pubs are going to be the last thing that they put they really open. Yeah. So but it's you know <laughs> it's, it's, it's such a tough one but it's um you know it can't go on forever. Um, money's a worry to everybody, but you know, I think I think we will get there, and it's. Oh, I'm sure we will. Yeah. But, um, yeah, there's, there's, there's so many, so many, so many uncertainties, aren't there? We've, well, they have been all the way through this. But it's, but I think that that's that's kind of the perhaps the most difficult thing about it is is that there's no sort of defined light at the end of. And I make, I've got to stop you. The sound's going to get, mate. And I think we might have lost the sound there, mate. Um, That's all I won't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> but I should uh, probably leave it at that because um, it is cutting out. But thanks a lot for spending some time with us. And um, and I'll, I'll let you know when it's online. Hopefully, I'll see you in person sooner rather than later. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Yeah.